Hello and welcome guys to reception. This video is all about the ICSC semester 1 history and civics examination that will be held in the month of November 2021. In this video we will discuss the pattern of the first semester exam and also we will solve the official specimen paper that has been released by the council. So make sure that you watch this video till the end and if you like it do hit the thumbs up button. Share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel Edusception. Also hit the bell icon to get notified of all our videos. Without further ado, let's begin. So guys over here I have the ICSC semester 1 examination specimen question paper for history and civics. Let's go through the instructions. The maximum marks is 40. The time allowed is 1 hour and guys this 1 hour includes the reading time. That means within 1 hour you will have to read the entire thing and solve it. All the questions are compulsory so you will have to answer all the questions present over here and the marks intended for questions are given in brackets like this. So guys basically this question paper is divided into three parts. Part 1, Part 2 and Part 3. Part 1 comprises 20 questions of 1 mark each to give you 20 marks. Part 2 comprises 6 questions of 2 marks each to give you 6 into 2, 12 marks. And Part 3 comprises 2 questions of 4 marks each to give you 2 into 4, 8 marks. So the pattern is very simple. You have to go through the entire question paper and solve all the questions that you face. So first let's begin with Part 1. So as you can see Part 1, 20 marks. We have the first question. If the strength of the house is 350 members, the quorum will be. Guys, if you have read the first chapter, the union parliament, you should know that the quorum of any house is 10%. That means if the strength is 350 members, the quorum will be 10% of 350, which is 35. Hence, the correct option is option 4. Simple. Moving on to question number 2, we have Lok Sabha 550 Rajya Sabha question mark. So over here, this is the strength. So the strength of Lok Sabha is 550 and the strength of Rajya Sabha will be 250 that is option 1. Moving on to question number 3 we have How many members of the Rajya Sabha retire once every 2 years? So guys one third members of the Rajya Sabha retire once every 2 years. Hence option 4 is correct. Moving on to question number 4. Residuary power refers to the power to make laws on subjects which are in the so not in the union list not in the state list and not in the concurrent list. That means option 4 not part of these three lists are correct. Moving on to question number 5. Who determines the salaries and allowances of MPs and ministers? Guys the parliament of India determines the salaries and allowances of MPs and ministers. Hence option 2 is correct. Moving on to question number 6 we have who is empowered to promulgate an ordinance when the parliament is not in session. Guys, the president of India has that power. Hence, option 2 is correct. Moving on to question number 7, we have Which of the following procedures authorizes the executive to draw funds from the consolidated fund until the budget is passed by the parliament? So guys, vote on account. Option 1 is correct. Moving on to question number 8. Who elect the members of the Rajya Sabha? So guys, the members of the Vidhan Sabha elect the members of the Rajya Sabha. Hence, option 2 is correct. Moving on to question number 9, we have complete the given analogy. So the analogy question is present over here. Lok Sabha is to speaker and Rajya Sabha is to. So speaker is the ex officio chairman of the Lok Sabha and the vice president is the ex officio chairman of the Rajya Sabha. Hence, option 1, vice president is correct. Moving on to question number 10 we have which statement does not apply to subsidiary alliance. Number 1 the kings virtually lost their power this applies. It was introduced by Lord Dalhousie this does not apply. The kings had to maintain the British army at their cost this applies. They had a British resident in their court this applies. Now uh, these are uh, statements the options are in the next page. So for question number 10, option 3 is correct, only statement 2. Moving on to question number 11, the year in which the Congress was established. So guys, the Indian National Congress was established in the year 1885. So option 1 is correct. 
मूविंग ऑन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेल्व विच ऑफ दी फॉलोइंग इज अ मेथड ऑफ असर्टिव नेशनलिस्ट स्वदेशी यस बॉयकॉट यस पैसिव रेजिस्टेंस यस एंड रिवाइवलिज्म यस सो ऑप्शन फोर ऑल ऑफ दी अब इज करेक्ट मूविंग ऑन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टीन वी हैव कंप्लीट दी गिवन एनोलॉजी सो अनदर एनोलॉजी क्वेश्चन साइमन कमीशन इज टू सिविल डिसोबीडियंस मूवमेंट सो क्रिप्स मिशन इज टू सो गाइज दिस विल बी क्विट इंडिया मूवमेंट विच इज ऑप्शन थ्री मूविंग ऑन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टीन वी हैव द सुप्रीम कमांडर ऑफ द इंडियन नेशनल आर्मी सो गाइज नेताजी सुभाष चंद्र बोस वॉज द सुप्रीम कमांडर ऑफ द इंडियन नेशनल आर्मी मूविंग ऑन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टीन According to the Indian Independence Act of 1947, which of the following are applicable to the princely states? So they could remain independent. Yes, that is applicable. They could join India. Applicable. All treaties with the British were terminated. Applicable. They could choose to be a part of Pakistan. So this is also applicable. Hence, option one, all of the above is correct. Moving on to question number sixteen. Unity, faith, sacrifice was the motto of the forward block. You have to replace the underlined word to correct the statement, guys. In the official specimen paper, nothing was underlined, but over here, forward block should be underlined. So I have done that. So unity, faith, sacrifice was the motto of option number two, Indian National Army. Moving on to question number seventeen, we have Dash was denied pension under the doctrine of lapse. So guys, Nana Saheb option four was denied pension under the doctrine of lapse. Moving on to question number eighteen, the General Service Enlistment Act implied that soldiers. Now this act implied that soldiers would have to travel overseas to fight. Hence, option two is correct. Moving on to question nineteen, Mahatma Gandhi signed a pact with Dash to end the civil disobedience movement. So, guys, I hope you have studied about the Gandhi Irwin Pact. Hence, option two, Lord Irwin is correct. Moving on to question number twenty. The nationalists felt Bengal was partitioned to divide Hindus and Muslims. Hence, option one to divide Hindus and Muslims is correct. Guys, before beginning with the questions of part two, let me tell you that in the specimen paper, no instructions were given for the part two questions. But I feel that all the questions of part two have two correct options. Now, all the questions of part two are of two marks. Hence, I feel that all the questions of part two will have two correct options. Let's check them out. Question number twenty-one: When can the Parliament not legislate on subjects included in the state list? So over here, option one: When the state is ruled by a coalition, will be correct. And option three: When the Lok Sabha passes a resolution by two-thirds majority, will also be correct. Moving on to question number twenty-two. Which of these are not exclusive powers of the Lok Sabha? Option one: It can introduce a money bill, so this is an exclusive power. It can pass an ordinary bill, this is not an exclusive power. Number three: It can pass the no confidence motion, this is an exclusive power. And number four: It can amend the constitution, this is not an executive power. Hence, which of these are not exclusive powers of the Lok Sabha? So option two. and option 4 will be correct moving on to question number 23 which of these are legislative powers of the parliament number 1 making laws on subject in the union list so this is a legislative power number 2 approving ordinances this is also a legislative power option 3 and option 4 are financial powers moving on to question number 24 from the given list identify the aims of the muslim league number 1 to develop and consolidate the feelings of national unity among muslims number 2 to protect and advance the political right of muslims so option 2 is correct to train and organize public opinion of the muslims in the country and number 4 to prevent hostilities between muslims and other communities so this option that is option 4 is also correct hence option 2 and option 4 are correct Moving on to question number twenty-five, we have identified the clauses of the Rollet Act. Number one, restrictions on the movement of people. This is correct. And number two, suspension of the habeas corpus writ. This is also correct. Moving on to question number twenty-six, choose the correct option to match the following: A. Jyotiba Phule. That will be Satya Sodhak Samaj. 
B. Raja Ram Mohan Roy, that will be Brahmo Samaj. C. Netaji Subhash Chandra Bosch, that will be Forward Block. And D. A. O. Hume, that will be Indian National Congress. So D, C, B, A. So over here, option D will be correct because 1 goes to 4, 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 2 and 4 goes to 1. Moving on to question number 27, which is the question of part 3. Now read the passage given and answer the questions that follow. You can read the passage. We will start with the questions. The first question based on that passage is A. Where did the incident take place? So guys that passage was about the Chauri Chora incident. Hence option 2 Chauri Chora is correct. Subpart B. Which movement did Gandhiji withdraw because of this incident? So guys Gandhiji withdrew the non-cooperation movement. So option 1 is correct. Moving on to subpart C. Identify any two impacts of the movement that was suspended due to this event. So first we have instilled confidence in people. So this is correct. Number two led to large scale communal rights. This won't be correct. Number three promoted social reforms. This is correct. And number four is not correct. Moving on to question number 28. Over here we have a picture question and I told you in a previous video did on history and civics that picture question will surely come. So try to study all the pictures that are present in the syllabus. So over here we have a picture of Gandhiji and Lord Mountbatten. Subpart A. Identify the man with Mahatma. So Lord Mountbatten was sitting with Mahatma Gandhi. So option 1 is correct. Number 2. He was deputed to India for the following reason. Number 1 to implement Lord Wavell plan. Number 2 for effective administration. Number 3 for peaceful transfer of power. So option 3 for peaceful transfer of power is correct. Moving on to subpart C, the last question of this specimen paper. Identify from the list two proposals of the plan formulated by him. So option 2, formation of a constituent assembly and option 4, setting up of a boundary commission. Both of them are correct. With the end of the specimen paper, we come to an end of this video. As always, new videos on Edusception are coming very soon, so stay tuned. Until then, this is Rishi on behalf of Edusception signing off and guys, take care.